words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Heaven. Everybody would want heaven if they only know what heaven is like. Heaven is the most exciting place where there are pleasures forevermore. At his right hand, there is fullness of joy. So you must have fullness of joy right here on earth, a foretaste. Heaven is nothing but a thousand times more of what you already have here. Some people think heaven is going to be so wonderful, life is a drab here, you know. I don't have nothing here, I have only tears, but I'm going to heaven and there everything will be taken. No, 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 no. What is heaven? Heaven is a wonderful place. We used to sing a song that said heaven is a wonderful place. It is a real place. It is not a never, never land. It is not a land that never existed or never will exist. It is a wonderful place. The thing is, it is a far superior, better place than any place that you could have here on this earth. That is why it is worthwhile congratulating a person who has made it over there. But please don't do it <laughs> because you may get whipped because people may not understand it. Don't go like a smart aleck and say, congratulations, you know. Everybody doesn't understand that. But it's important to, instead of doing that, it's important to understand. These things you have to say now, you know. Otherwise, people, some people may practice it, you know. But this is the truth. The person who's gone from here to there needs to be congratulated. It's a blessed person because he has gone from this place to that place, far superior, better place, a residence that he could never imagine, never could have on this earth. 
far superior place. That's what heaven is all about. Secondly, heaven is the place of great rejoicing. Rejoicing. Now, 1611, Psalm 1611. You're in Psalm, so just turn to 16 and 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Look at how psalmist talks about heaven. He understands heaven. He says, in your presence, right there in heaven, where you are, is fullness of joy. Joy is full there. And he says, at your right hand are pleasures. Heaven is a place of pleasures. Pleasures evermore. Now, some people think that heaven is a boring place, actually. You know, because the church has failed to convey the good news about heaven and what it is really. We have failed to preach it properly. We have kind of conveyed things here and there in a kind of a, uh, not in teaching, but just saying this and that, you know. So what do people think? They think heaven is a place they've seen somewhere, maybe in a movie or in a drama or, or somewhere, where uh, this person is there playing the harp, you know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 24 hours, that's what he's doing. So you show some of our young people, this is what you're going to be doing in heaven if you believe in Jesus. Yeah. You'll be going to heaven and playing harp 24 hours and just saying hallelujah, 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 and just praising God. And that's all heaven is all about. He's going to say, please, I don't want to go there. Send me some other place. <laughs> that's a boring thing to do all day, forever. For all eternity, that will be a boring thing for one whole day, but it will be a boring thing if you, if you have to do it for all eternity. So we, have, we thought that people will think that if you are shouting hallelujah all day, that will be an interesting thing, but you can take that only for so long. Be truthful to yourself. <laughs> Those days they told us, you're just going to be singing there and that's all that's going to happen, you're going to play the harp, you know. And we said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Praise the Lord, you know. Because you can't say, no, I don't want to do that, you know. But really, in your heart, you know, that's boring, man. You know, who wants to play a harp? Bring the electric guitar or something, <laughs> keyboard or drums or something. Why can't we have, why can't we have some of these nice instruments? What's wrong with heaven? I don't want to sit around with a harp, you know. Harp is a wonderful instrument, but not everybody likes it. <laughs> So some people think it's a very boring place. Some people think, you know, they, they show in the movies, mostly movies. Christians, you know, mo get most of their doctrine from the movies. I know that. You know, they see more movies than by, uh, read the Bible, you know. And uh, since preachers are not preaching real sermons uh, about these things, the only source they have is movies. So in the movie, they see a person just floating in the cloud, you know. Like a, like a, uh, like a fluffy cotton candy or something, you know. <laughs> That's a person who's just floating over there, doing nothing, just being like this, in a half-awake state. So we thought, my God, who wants to be like that forever? If I'm going to be in heaven, am I going to be floating on the clouds all day long? Or just play the harp, you know, playing the same thing, you know, again and again. I don't want to go there. And then they have pictures like, you know, back in the old days, we used to have uh, this Amul baby advertisements, you know. This plump, uh, fat baby. You know, and uh, what Christians do is, they want to show, if they want to show what angels are like, they put two wings to that little baby. <laughs> so you got this little fat chubby little baby, plump baby with wings. They said, these are angels. But Bible says one angel killed 180,000 men. <laughs> angels are not like fat little plump babies, you know. <laughs> angels are mighty, uh, mighty angels of God, you know. Totally different picture. So people say, see this, this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of presentation about heaven. Angels flying around like little babies with wings. 
clouds with people playing little harp, you know, and so on. They say, man, that's what heaven is going to be like, you know. Bad, I don't want to go to heaven. Another thing is, some people see the church. When they go to church, the church is the dullest place on earth in many places, you know. Dullest place on earth. Everybody becomes so stiff and say, come in. So, if you even turn this side, the mother goes, you know, <laughs> look here. You know, you can't even smile, you can't laugh, you can't, you can't clap, you can't lift your hands, you can't do this, you can't do that. So many rules and regulations. Church is the dullest place on earth in many places. No wonder some of these young people, I've actually heard some people say, Man, if heaven is going to be like this, I'd rather go to hell. <laughs> See, the devil has done great disservice. And what he has done is, he has presented heaven like a negative, boring place and presented hell like a place where party is happening, where jazz is being played and, and rock music is played. And it's such a wonderful place that you can go there and have fun. Who wants to go to heaven and play a harp? And be floating around like angels, you know. So people, young people think, Ma, I don't want to go to heaven. Heaven's a boring place. <laughs> One of the things we need to do these days is to present heaven just by the way we run the church. The church must be a very exciting place, a place of great joy. If heaven is a place of great rejoicing, church must be a place of great rejoicing. Church must be a miniature heaven. Christians must show heaven right here. People must be attracted to heaven if they say, if they came in here and they said, my God, man, this is so nice. I felt so good. I went in there. It was so wonderful. Everything was so good. I got so much. I was built up. I came out stronger than I went in. I feel happy. Things are better. I changed if this is what heaven is going to be, and if it's going to be thousand times better than this, same thing but thousand times more, then I want to go there. That's where I want to go, you see. Not only the church, the home must be a place like that. The home must be a place of rejoicing. There must be laughter. There must be singing. There must be smile in everybody's face. Tears must be wiped away. It must be a place of joy and peace and happiness. Our homes are miniature heavens. People must see that our home is like a heaven. And they must say, I want, to, I want to go to heaven because I have seen a taste of what heaven is like. See, the devil has made people think hell is a partying place, nice place, and heaven is a boring place. But actually, if you look at hell, hell it's a very dangerous place to go to. If you really hear, hear the news about hell, you don't ever want to go there. Look at the story of the poor Lazarus, you know. Poor Lazarus was poor on earth. I don't know which church he went to. <laughs> but, they, but they had enough sense to preach to him salvation, and he got saved and had enough sense to go to heaven, you know. Thank God for that. But they told him, don't be rich because you won't be going to heaven. But he ended up in heaven, in Abraham's bosom. Here is a, the story is about a Jewish person, you know, Jewish background story. He goes and ends up in Abraham's bosom, his forefather. What a place of comfort it must have been. He's Abraham's descendant, going to his father Abraham, going and landing up there. What a great comfort it must have been to land up there in Abraham's bosom and just look at him and say, wow. This is my forefather. I'm Abraham's descendant coming right to Abraham's bosom. But look at the rich man. He's got nobody there in that story. He's alone. I'll say to you, my friend, hell is like a solitary confinement. And that is lifelong, which is forever. Not 20 years. Not parole in 10 years. Forever. Solitary confinement where you'll never see God, never feel the presence of God, never approach God, never contact God, cannot have the light of His presence, cannot see anybody else. You're left alone by yourself. Why alone? 
Because what is a sinner like? A sinner, the thing that characterizes a sinner is his selfishness. I, me, everything for me, I first, me alone. That's the way he lived. So God says, all right, we'll do this for you. We'll leave you alone forever. That's what hell is. It's a sad place. He wanted to be alone. He doesn't want God. He doesn't want to have anything to do with God. Have you heard people say that? I don't want to have anything to do with God. Well, their wish will be granted one day. Even if you wanted to have anything to do with God, you will not have anything. You will have never have any chance to do anything with it. That's what hell is. That's a terrible place, my friend. Just to talk about it is such a sad thing. It's a terrible place. People driven by selfishness and uh, people living for them, their own selves, never caring about others, never caring about God, not wanting God in their lives, end up by themselves to, to just sit there and meditate and ruminate on their past uh, and what they could have done, uh, what they could have changed, uh, how this could be so and that could be so and so on. All, the, all that goes on in their loneliness. Could heaven be boring? Heaven cannot be boring. Hell is a dangerous, saddest place. Nobody wants to go there. God doesn't want even one person to go there. You know that? The Bible says that God never made hell for people. He made hell for the fallen angels. It is not will God, the will of God that even one should perish. That's the way the Bible puts it. Not even one should perish, but everyone must have everlasting life. That's the will of God. You can't blame God. God has expressed His will, sent His Son, did everything, you know. So hell is a bad place. I don't want to even think about it. And those people that say, I'd rather go to hell, you know. I've seen some people, you know, that look at some Christians and said, if he's going to heaven, I don't want to go there, you know. <laughs> they look at some churches and say, if this is the way heaven is going to be, I don't want to go there. They are misinformed, my friend. They are misinformed. Hell is a place that you'd never wish that you would go. Heaven is a place that you would long to go if you really knew the truth about heaven. Could heaven be boring? To say that heaven is boring is to say that God is boring. And I say to you, God is not a boring God. Why? Just look at yourself. You are made in the image and likeness of God. How has God made you? Just look. He has given you His image and likeness. He has put something of Himself into you. You know what He has put into you? The capacity to feel pleasure and excitement. Have you ever felt pleasure and excitement? The ability to feel pleasure and excitement. See, some people think pleasure is itself is wrong. That's the, way, see, that's the problem, you see, with the Christian church. We thought, pleasure? Don't you even use the word in our church. No pleasure. But psalmist says, in your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Heaven is a place of pleasures. God has pleasures. God has pleasures for you. He has given you the capacity and the ability to have some pleasures. Excitement. Have you ever ex ex experienced excitement? Been to a cricket match and seen a guy, you know, hit six after six, you know, and you sit there and your team is winning and your hair just stands up and you want to jump up and shout and be totally excited. That ability to be excited comes from God. It's part of God. In His presence, His pleasures. So that pleasure, that capacity to pleasure, for pleasure comes from Him. Who's God? He's a master artist who created the universe. He is the one that invented music. He is the one that made men like Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and all these great guys. Have you ever heard them? Have you ever heard a symphony orchestra perform their compositions? You download them in your iTunes and put a headphone and listen to it. Your hair will stand up, my friend. How can a man have such talent to compose such music? Music is an amazing thing. You will feel such pleasure. Pleasure beyond anything that you can even describe. 
You've not heard these things. You've not had pleasures. <laughs> this is good pleasure. Pleasures. God-given capacity. God wants you to enjoy these things. He made the music. He made the music people. He gave the talents. He showed the way to make the instruments. Uh, God has given the wisdom to do all these things. God is the maker of all these things. Anything that you find anywhere that is admirable and fascinating comes from God. Think about it. Anything you look at and say, wow, how nice it is. That's from God. How beautiful it is. That's from God. You go to Kodaikanal and stand there, or you go to Niagara Falls and stand there as the water just drizzles all over you. You say, that's God. God is amazing. God is exciting. God is a God who knows what he's doing. How can God be boring? How can that kind of a God who gave the ability to play music to a man that can thrill thousands and lakhs of people in an audience, how can that God be dull and boring? How can God give a talent to a man to write a book that will sell millions of copies where people will read, never put it down before finishing reading? How can God be dull when he gives that kind of talent and ability? So God is not boring. Therefore, heaven will not be boring. And you are not supposed to be boring also. <laughs> I got to say that, you know. Put that in at the right point. <laughs> in case you are boring, sometimes, you know, life's pressures, not pleasures, Life's pressures get to people, and because of life's pressures and problems and difficulties, people become dull. They're not able to enjoy, they're not able to smile, they become a dull person because they're weighed down with problems and they don't know how to get out of it, and they don't know the way out, they don't know God maybe. And it's a sad thing that some people can be dull. But I tell you something, when you put your faith in Christ and when you die and go to heaven, I'll tell you, even that dull person will become a dynamic person. Because no more burdens, no more pressures, none of that, none of that anymore. You will be an exciting person. Amen? You'll be an exciting person. So, it is so important. Heaven is a rejoice, place of rejoicing. If it's a place of rejoicing, church must be a place of rejoicing. In some churches, they just allowed people to smile and laugh and clap. A big revolution will happen. Everybody would want to come into church and listen, you know, what's going on. Look at some of these guys that come and drop people here, some drivers and some auto rickshaw guys and, and so on. We have this happening all the time. They come and drop, they don't want to leave. They come and drop it, drop them, and they don't want to leave. They just sit there. They park somewhere, they sit over there, then they're sitting with the Bible over here. <laughs> I asked so many of them, how did you come? I said, I came to drop, sir, and I saw all this singing and rejoicing and all this thing that's going on. So nice it is. So I thought I'll just sit around and see what's happening. And God touched me. Today, I'm a believer and I'm following Christ, you know. If you... <laughs> Heaven is such an exciting thing. Who wouldn't want heaven? Everybody would want heaven if they only know what heaven is like. Heaven is the most exciting place where there are pleasures forevermore. At his right hand, there is fullness of joy. So you must have fullness of joy right here on earth, a foretaste. Heaven is nothing but a thousand times more of what you already have here. Some people think heaven is going to be so wonderful, life is a drab here, you know. I don't have nothing here, I have only tears, but I'm going to heaven and there everything will be taken. No, 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 no. Life is going to be a thousand times more of what you enjoy here. All the rejoicing we do here, all the shouting and all the jumping and all the joy that we see here is wonderful, but wait until you get to heaven. It will be ecstatic. It will be excitement beyond anything that you can imagine because heaven is a place of rejoicing. Clap our hands. 
Jesus is alive. Living 